my first discovery of that I had muscular dystrophy was through actually a little cousin of mine. Because one of the visits uh, at the hospital, we came back and stopped at my cousin's house. And one of the little cousins, uh, I, that what they gave me is they gave me some vitamins when they sent me away from the hospital at Riley and said, you know, here, take him home and give him the vitamins and he'll probably live to be an early teenager and that's it because in those days that's what the diagnosis was for muscular dystrophy was early teenagers about as far as you made it. And in the process of this, I remember showing my little cousin these vitamins and I dropped them on the ground in the dirt. And one of my the little cousins that was about the same age as I said, oh, it doesn't make any difference anyway because your dad just told my mother you're gonna die. And that was kind of, was cut. Ralph Braun had two options, sit and wait for that prediction to come true or use those words as fuel to prove it wrong. With his parents behind him, he was determined to live an independent life even if he had to invent that independence himself. I set out in my cousin's farm shop and actually did the welding, drilling, and cutting, and whatever on my idea that I had, which the first wheelchair actually I built was a four-wheel monster that you might say that I, when I completed it, I tore my mother's kitchen all up, driving to dry around inside of it. And as soon as it was complete and I saw the, the obstacles I had with this four-wheel chair, I immediately started to work on a smaller, more compact three-wheel chair. Ralph resolved to have an education, a family, and a career like anyone else, and he did. Having no alternative, he drove his tri-wheeler on the streets to get to his job and support his growing family. It was interesting to say the least. I rode the chair probably from uh, minus 20 degrees to uh, probably 120 degrees, just depending on what the weather was. I used to bundle up and have a little red light that I stuck on the thing and to travel because I, the sidewalks were really not accessible because there was no ramps. And so consequently, I uh, braved, I must say, the streets, actually and shared it with the other cars. When the company he worked for moved even farther from his home, he could no longer depend on his wheelchair alone for transportation. I found an old uh, post office vehicle, a Jeep, that had a right-hand drive at an auction in Indianapolis. I took a look at it and go, okay, now I'm out here and there's the driver's seat up there and I can take that driver's seat out. I know I can do that. I know I can make hand controls for it, but how am I gonna get up in there? Ralph converted the old Jeep into what was the world's first accessible vehicle, and he drove it until the Jeep would no longer run. He came across a new vehicle in 1970, a full-size Dodge van, and immediately knew it would change his life. So I sat down on a Saturday morning and started drawing up stuff, and I had my brother-in-law and another guy working for me building tri-wheelers. I come up with some metal and an idea, and in a couple weeks we took the metal, start cutting it up, and started making really the first lift ever. In a few short weeks, his conversion caught the attention of the disabled community. One man drove in from Texas, another from Ohio, and still another came in from Boston. They had all heard about Ralph's van and wanted him to convert their vans as well. As the saying goes, you know, sort of the rest is history. Ralph Braun refused to let his disability hold him back. What started as a part-time business in his parents' garage has grown into a global enterprise, bringing independence and mobility to thousands of individuals. If there's a, a reward to this business and whatever, that's the one that I cherish the most, is the customer's satisfaction and the customer being able to become mobile and to be able to travel uh, independently uh, as they see fit. That is my reward. The public's perception of the disabled community has changed dramatically in the past decades. 
broad ability products have allowed an entire generation of people with disabilities to lead full and active lives. And over the years, society has come to realize what Ralph Braun has known all along, that life is a moving experience. The road to where that I took from the early 60s to today is uh, a road that was rough, it was, had a lot of bumps and uh, bruises and so forth in it, but would I trade it for anything? Absolutely not. Rise Above, how one man's search for mobility helped the world get moving.